When did you see it and where? Oh, many years ago, right here at the southwest end of Loch Ness at Fort Augustus. What was it like? Oh, very like a swan, long neck, small head, and one big hump about 30 feet long. I saw it in August 1937 at the point of Castle Arcot. What was it like? Just had one big hump and a dog, a head something like a dog. It was like an up, our own boat, an upturned boat, about 15 feet long. I saw it at Temple Pier in August 1937. What was it like? Like an elephant's back or an upturned boat. Many people mm -hmm. see this as nonsense. Oh, no, it's not nonsense. Not now. I didn't believe in it then, but I believe in it now. Yes. Well, so did I. I think it was a lot of nonsense too, until I saw it myself. It's not rubbish. I saw it and I believe in it now. But even if St. Peter came here himself and said he saw it, they wouldn't believe him. That is the evidence. The evidence of reputable people who all claim to have seen this thing, whatever it is, at one time or another. It's approaching the witching hour of midnight, and I'm standing on Temple Pier, Drumla Jocket, on Loch Ness. And if ever I saw warlocks and witches in my life, well, I think I see them now, right there in the glare of this searchlight. The beam sweeps the dark waters of the loch. The watchers think they see something and it's action stations. Of course, it's been action stations for a long time now. For close to 1400 years, in fact, when the monster was first reputed to be seen by monks about 565 AD. Since then, over a thousand different people from all walks of life claim to have seen it at distances varying from 40 feet to a mile or more. The evidence, as you've heard, varies. Sometimes one hump, sometimes two, sometimes three. It's been seen all over Loch Ness from Fort Augustus to Castle Urquhart. Well, there it is, the end of another night's vigil. The first of many over the last 12 nights or so. They'll be back again tomorrow, and well, tomorrow is another day. Another day, and the work still goes on. The work of watching and waiting. The leader of the expedition, Mr. David James, is an English member of parliament but in fact, a Scotsman from Mull. Mr. James, what does the operation involve? Well, I've long had a hunch that this creature, like other rare creatures, might be predominantly nocturnal. So we've come up at the end of the year, in October, after the tourists and the motorboats have left, with these army hired searchlights and three and a half ton generators to keep 24 hour watch around the clock. Uh, this has imposed rather a strain on the 22 members of the expedition particularly since by day, whenever it's been flat calm, we've fanned out to man seven other stations to cover the entire lock from doors to foyers. We have, however, been very lucky with a good deal of local help. And what are the objects? The objects are to prove conclusively that this is no longer a music hall joke, but that there is a viable species in the lock. And obviously by species, I mean a breeding herd, which was cut off in the lock when it ceased to be a fjord only about 7,000 years ago. And what success have you had? Ooh, it's early days to say, you know. I think I'd like to put it this way. We're still happy. Well, there it is. I wouldn't know. But as a wiser man than I once said, there are more things in heaven and death, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Good night.